All right, take it away, Friday Night Flies. Yeah, we're back. Friday Night Flies. Older, we're here in uh, Spud Valley Sporting Goods, 1380 Birch Street, downtown Pemberton. Come in and see us and uh, get all your hunting and fishing. And Hey, maybe pick up some fishing supplies. Um, and of course, we're brought to you by Pemberton Fish Finder, where we talk trout. And uh, we got Brad behind the controls there, doing his magic, bringing you all the Facebook videos and goodies and posts. I think you got one coming up on Pemberton Fish Finder slash reports. He's checking the volume, so he's not listening to me, but that's all good. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so if you want to know what the fishing's like in our area here, Pemberton Whistler Corridor, uh, check out Pemberton Fish Finder slash reports dot com. And uh, yeah, so. What I'm doing, when you go down, it is going to look very similar to the fly from last week, the dragonfly that I did, or it might have been the week before, but we've upped the game and we've done a woven body fly. So you want to go down there right if now, you take me saying? down, we'll show everybody. Take me down to the bus. So, yes, it looks very similar to the last one. Same kind of features for uh, the eyes and the wing casing and legs. But what we've done is a woven body. So the one that I'm going to tie, it'll be a little bit more obvious because I'll use this light tan colored chenille instead of the green. So you'll be able to see it a lot more. But this thing was just crushing it on Alta Lake in the last two days. So we've upped the size of the hook. We've gone to the size that the, uh, the BK dragonfly nymph that Brad unveiled a couple weeks ago. And anyways, enough talking. Let's get down to tie in here. And uh, yeah, this one's still a little wet, and I was using it today. So I've caught a couple of cutthroat on it and a couple of rainbows. In the windy, the windy, windy, windy. That's all I can say, you windy. Scott, we should uh, also do a thank you to Amber. Oh, yeah. And we're going to showcase them tonight, too. So if you guys are tuning in live. Thank you to Donald and Barbara for sending us some beautiful anvil scissors. Oh, from the pocket, man. Yeah, so, right here. yeah. So they, yeah, they sent us a little sampling of uh, some of their, their different scissors that they have. We're stoked. And uh, we yeah, actually one of the pairs that's in here is the one that I currently use. And uh, yeah, you know what? Let's try one out. Well, let's do it. I'm, I'm <laughs> curious about this mini one. I'm really curious about this mini one. The only, then you got this little, look at that little guy. That'd be perfect for my big fat fingers. It will, it, it so falls, we're gonna, we're gonna it does, that one here. maybe, maybe you need to try that one. <laughs> but uh, here's another one. This is Anvil, Barbara and Donald. I think it's Donald. I hope it is. Yeah. Um, Either way, Barbara hooked us up. These guys, that's what I want to see on this curved scissor. Because those fit beautifully. Oh. This, this one's just a, it's a little thick, but uh, we're going to use it. It's, I bet you they're sharp as all. Anyway, so let's start this this off here. We got a nice big size two hook, five extra large. And when it comes to the braiding of the body or the woven body, Brad, I am going to move the camera because there's only one way to do it, and that's with the fly pointing at you. Okay. So we're going to have to do a little refocusing yeah, no worries, and stuff. I can do it this way, but I want you guys to be able to see how the weaving is done. It's pretty simple. Um, so get your thread on, get your eyes on, right there at the top. And I just leave a little bit of room at the eye of the hook so that we can get our, our foam wing case and head in and get those nice and secure. And then, I'm gonna change uh, mics too. We'll go with the far one because there's no one else. Yeah, now we're now we're closed for business for the day. Let's let's not lose my lovely scissors. There we go. All right, so get yourself wrapped to the uh, right before the bend of the hook, and we're gonna do a little tail in here. So I'm just using a little bit of this brown <laughs> marabou. And just gonna get a little tough of it here. And I'm gonna tie that in. 
And because the body is bulky, we're going to use this. Bulkiness. Bulkiness, why not, right? I'm going to switch hands for myself here. Do you hear I do it that way? Yeah. I just don't like doing it on the camera because then your hand's passing in front. So yeah. I'm taking that up to um, just past half of the hook length. Woo! Those are sharp. <clears throat> nice, eh? Sharp scissors. New scissors. And then we're going to wrap back. <laughs> and I'm going to go forward. All right. So all these pieces are all going to fit together right we're going to be tying them all in just past that halfway point. So I guess that's what, two thirds. Uh, we're going to tie in our rib, which I'm using this dark green ultra wire. And now this body is pretty thick. So you're going to, if you're used to doing like woolly buggers and stuff, you're going to be doubling the length of your, uh, your wire. So I got a good six, seven inches here. I'm going to tie that in. And then you're going to go forward. Next, uh, let's get the chenille in. So this, this tan color is going to work really good too for the dragonflies. And we want a good... Oof, when do you say that's about a foot? You don't want to be, sh uh, be left short. And I'm going to tie this piece on the side. So this helps to build the profile of the dragonfly by widening the torso instead of making everything all big and tall. Next we go to our yarn. Use the yarn of your of your color choice. If uh, you go to the store, and uh, this I'm probably going to cut about two feet of it because um, this first part is going to build the base and then we will... I usually end up going back for some more. Then I'm going to tie it on the other side. Now, if you're at the fabric store and you're trying to find some yarn, bring a little bit of Velcro with you, or just go over to the little Velcro section that they have. And uh, before I continue that thought, you tie this one in on the opposite side. So I'll just spin it there real quick. So you got one on one side and one on the other. So take some Velcro with you. And then uh, when you're trying to find what yarn to get, Use your Velcro, make sure that it, it pulls and that you get some nice fabrics. So this one here happens to be um, all acrylic. I think, Brad, you did one that was... Tapestry. Tapestry, yeah, which is a wool yeah. blend. So wool picks out good. Um, not all of the acrylics pick out. It's tough to find the tapestry wool, too. Really tough. Yeah. And if you do find some, let me know, because I want more. Because you want more? <laughs> So get yourself tied in, move your thread back up to the front, and then we're going to start building this, this underbody here. Nice even wraps. Take your time building the body. If you don't, the whole thing just unravels on you. So my, I'm not overlapping my threads. They're just getting buttoned right up beside each other. Get to the end. You're going to do a generous, uh, generous wrap forward before you start doing the next one. And when I do this, you try not to just wind it like you would your thread. You want it to lay flat. If you wind it like your thread, the uh, the coiling of your of your of your twine or whatever you want to call this yarn um, gets spun up, and then you start getting like kind of more like rope instead of it laying nice and flat. So get your back. And probably one turn before the back, you're going to move forward again. And again, another nice generous turn forward. You know, we used to dub those things, man. I know. What a Think difference. about how much dubbing oh, that, yeah. that used to take. Well, and how long it took, too. Like, so again, I mean, You I'm could do a dubbing loop, and it was a little bit quicker, but it, it really got buggy when you did it that way. And if you look at Dragonfly Nymphs, if you look at like images online, they're actually pretty sleek. They're not really buggy. No, they don't have a lot of hair on them. So 
now that we've done our final one and I'm kind of starting to like the way this is looking, now I can get myself back to my last wrap here came right back to the tail. Oh, it wants to slide. And that's also because I'm twisting it. So when it gets twisted up, it'll slide instead of laying flat. So there you go. And last time going forward. And then we're going to crop this right in here. Good, tight turns on there. I like to fold it back on itself. Just kind of fills in that. Now, I still have some. I'm going to get rid of that because I know it is not long enough to do what I need to do. So, kind of match the length of your original chenille. You want a good foot in there. And now I'm going to tie it in on the side again. And now I take this opportunity to secure, and I'm going to tie it right back to the tail. So now you notice I have my chenille and my thread both on the same side of the fly. That is important. And now I'm going to just do some real nice tight wraps in here, and that will hold all that underbody in place so it doesn't slide. And then get my my thread back up to the front. So now this is where I'm going to move the camera. The easiest way to do this braiding is to point it actually towards you. And we're probably going to have to refocus yeah. and reposition a little bit. Yeah, bring it down a little bit more. And let me know if... More down, like toward the back. Like back there? Yeah, that'll work. Except that it's... We got a good shot of your crotch, but that's okay. And it looks like you got two, two tiny knots. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, so all I like to do is get this thread out of the way. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm just How gonna, I did that? Just so make sure everything's focused. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So just pull your thread away from your fly and just put the butt up against your, your vise if you don't have a thread holder, and that keeps it out of the way. Now let's try and do this knotting. So first step. Your chenille is going to be the underneath part, so it's the part that does all the knotting. First step is you get it up and over the top, and then I'm going to pull it tight, and I'm going to bring it across and under. So my brown top is going to go across, and we're going to go up and over, and we're going to pull it tight. So you control where... What place is really moving? Your voice. Oh, it's going to be moving all okay. over the place. Yeah. Okay, well, it's staying so somewhat focused. So. You, you control where the knot happens with this thread here. So if, if I want it, it's going to be all on top. If I want to keep it under the underneath side, I need to pull a little bit tighter. And then I go back across. And it's always, chenille's always, oh, there you go. You can see how the knots slide. So the chenille always goes over top. Oh, there goes my thread and tighten her down and bring it across. There goes my back, my chenille over the front of it, pull it down and under. Top goes across, down and under. So your chenille, every time you go to do your knot, should always be in the back of what's going over the top. Whoa. And you need to hold on tight so you can see my vice is moving all over the place. It's not a, it's pretty delicate, but there's there's a lot of tension that I'm putting in here to keep those knots it where they need to be. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's sophisticated. It takes a little bit of practice. But the outcome is pretty cool, man. I like the look of it. So I see there we go. I got my knot where I want it. Back over top. Loop that over. Keep that brown underneath. There we go. So you just keep going back and forth, back and forth.
So that's why you don't want to be uh, left shy because you want material to be able to hang on to to do these crisscrosses. All right, so now I got to my end point. My brown's, oh, my brown's gonna come over one more time. I'm just gonna grab my thread here if I can. If I'm still in focus, am I gonna yeah. trap it? No, you're doing good. All right, I'm gonna trap it. And now I'm going to, uh, so that's the end. There yeah, you go. That looks pretty cool, man. Woven body. All right, so let's try and get this. Are we going back? Over? I'll set back up here. I'm just going to do a couple tight ones there. Yeah. Pretty close. You got to go down just a smidgen. Put that work. Just got to get her back in focus. So yep. just give it a half second. Don't go uh, doing anything great. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So that's your body. Tighten this down. So first what I do, I'm not too worried about this little knot that's here. You can see there's a little bit of gap. That's going to get covered up with the legs and everything and the uh, wing casing. So oh, get, those scissors are sharp, eh? Get rid of that I stuff. Know, two pieces. It's like, just like, shoo! Now we can get our, our rib going up. So it's just a little bit of an accent. Uh, yeah. It'll also hold everything together too. Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. Drop it. And some good turns in there to secure everything. All right, how's that looking? Good. Oh yeah. Desired effect, done. All right, now we build the fly like normal. So we go to our wood duck. Mallard flank. Mallard flank. Wood color. Wood duck color. Wood duck color, yeah. So, so if that happens to you, that the stem comes off with it, get rid of that stem. Otherwise, it's going to force those feathers to... Uh, Go uneven. Now my first ones, I do pretty short. I do about half the body length. So they kind of mimic the front leg. Get them up to the side there. Get rid of those tags. Now I'm going to go to the other side. And do the same thing on this side. Get it in that hump there. There we go. A couple good turns. We'll get rid of all this stuff. Pheasant tail somewhere. So I like using these for the, the longer back leg. So I can usually take about four to five strands of that. Boom. Try and keep them so that the curves all stay together. And I bring those back to uh, just where the tail is. Make sure you get them in front of those little fibers. And have them angled off to the side and down a little. Oop, earthquakes. The camera chilled up. It's almost there. I don't pull on it. Just leave it. There you go. Other side. Couple good turns. Tags be gone. Uh, a little flash. So apparently I left my olive at home, so. I got pink in my box, so whatever. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to pick up a little light. I just grab a couple pieces, fold them over, snip them, fold them over, snip them. So it's just a little light 
something to pick up underneath that wing case that we're going to put in. Trap them, fold them over. We can adjust the length of them after. Um, okay. Now I'm going to go back to my chenille here. Nah, maybe I'll tie on the head. So just as the original dragon head, we cut out the shape of the head. Let's get up to the front of the eye. So I got myself a little tag. I'm just going to crisscross secure that tag in between the eyeballs. And then I'm going to tie in the same color that's the underbody, which is that chenille. Come on, get in there. So if I have to, yeah, I'm going to have to. So I tied my legs in a little far back, whatever. I'm just going to bring that chenille right back to them. And I'm going to fix the taper. There we go. And I just build it up behind those eyes. Just like that. Get that thread right behind the eyes. A couple good turns. She's done. And bring my thread back just a bit so that I can trap that foam. Don't pull too tight so that you don't send that wing casing straight up in the air. So give yourself some thread. Apparently I picked up some dubbing. There we go. Nice little whip finish. Give it a little snug down. Give me these new scissors. <laughs> Clip. Rotator, bud. And then push the eyes in. I just need to uh, trim this flash. So I don't want the that flash to be super long. I just want it just barely kind of sticking past the uh, that wing case. I'm going to push these, this foam together here to expose the eyes. And now my original one, which I haven't done on this one, is um, you take a sharpie, a brown sharpie, and go on the the foam, so it'll it'll give it a darker darker color. That's the underneath. There's your side to your top. So the foam acts as a uh, a true rider, keeps the the fly riding upright, doesn't let it to roll over to side to side. And on this particular one, I would probably make my wing casing a little longer. I cut it a little short. That happens when you kind of prefab them. So you can see that one's just a bit longer. And I tied the uh, legs in a little far back. But it's all about the weave. That's what you're trying to demonstrate here. That's it. Looks great. It's yeah, funny. so that's your weave. So that's how you get your two-tone. That's a lot of pressure on the camera. Do the weave. Okay, we're up top, buddy. Okay, so I'm Boulder. Thanks for watching. Uh, try doing some weaves on your nymphs. Um, you can take them into the itty bitty ones, use them floss and other things like that. Uh, that's your basic technique. Over, flop it over, pull the knot underneath. Uh, thanks for watching. Friday Night Flies. Scotty Holmes is coming up next. Yes. Yes. Bringing us his special go-to nymph that he's been uh, catching everything on this this uh, spring. I guess we're still in. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Join us again. Friday Night Flies.